launch that magazine to all of you. So Reem, please step up. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Reem Farhat and I am the editor-in-chief of Pax Literary Magazine, Palestine. Today, we will be releasing our fourth and final issue in our first volume. We have been working on this magazine for a year now. And I am incredibly grateful to have had the chance to work with such an amazing team and to have gotten as far as we have. And we cannot wait to share our future issues with you with the PAC community. Making a magazine like this is a community effort, so I'd like to thank everyone who made this issue possible. Thank you to the Fullerstein editors who worked so hard every issue. Thank you to Rania for being our amazing advisor and for all the work she does to make this magazine a success. Thank you to the board for supporting this magazine and to our sponsors who help fund the magazine through advertisements. Thank you to the readers and contributors of Palestine who make each issue bigger and better each time. I am also incredibly proud of the content of this issue, from the art we received to the poetry and written pieces in this issue. You will find reflections from participants of PAC's Homeland Project, poetry about the summer attacks on Al-Aqsa, an interview from someone who experienced those attacks firsthand, and short stories and narratives on what it means to be Palestinian. This magazine is titled Palestine, after the name of a Palestinian newspaper that circulated from 1911 to 1967. This newspaper has been cited as one of the many proofs of Palestinian existence, which is a sentiment we'd like to mirror with this magazine. Art, in whatever form it takes, be it poetry, photography, short stories, or paintings, is one of the strongest forms of resistance because it emphasizes the fact that we exist, that we have not forgotten about Palestine, and that we never will. This summer, I was lucky enough to spend 40 days in Palestine, 10 of which I spent with the Homeland Project, touring through different parts of Palestine. Visiting Palestine is a privilege I know not all Palestinians have, and it's one that I'm incredibly grateful for. There's a sense of calm that Palestinians get when they are in Palestine, and it's a feeling that can't be duplicated anywhere else in the world. However, being in Palestine has also made me increasingly aware of yet another privilege that I have, one that I share with many of you. As Palestinian Americans, we don't have to face the direct effects of the occupation on a daily basis. We don't know what it's like to be constantly restricted in your movements, to live in a refugee camp, and to have to endure attacks and assault at the hands of Israeli soldiers. And although I know that living in America, I've been sheltered from such experiences, it wasn't until I heard how casually Palestinians speak of these transgressions that I realized they're a part of daily life. To live in Palestine as a Palestinian is to live a life of constant struggle. And seeing this and knowing this reinvigorated the goals that I have in mind for this magazine. This magazine's purpose has always been resistance in the form of reclaiming the Palestinian narrative. And seeing Palestine with this goal in mind has only increased the urgency of this mission. Therefore, I urge each and every one of you to contribute to this magazine in any way you can. Whether it's contributing art and pieces, sharing and spreading the word about the magazine, or buying ad space by filling out some of the forms that will be passed around later. This magazine is a way to make sure Palestinian stories are being documented and shared. It's a way of preserving our history and of refusing to be silenced. This mission is especially important today which marks 35 years since the Sabra and Shatina massacre and the Sabra and Shatina refugee camps in Lebanon, where a strategic attack from Lebanese militant groups and the Israeli military left an upwards of 3,000 Palestinian refugees dead. The effects of this massacre can be seen today, where Palestinian refugees in Lebanon face constant oppression from the Lebanese government, many of which are being kicked out of camps with nowhere to go and no ability to purchase land, and face many other forms of economic and social inequality. It's because we have so many Palestinians facing harsh and unfair circumstances all over the world that we Palestinian Americans must make sure that they are not forgotten and that their rights to return are secured. I urge you all to refuse to be silent and to speak up for Palestinians all over the world. I urge you, in any way you can, to resist. Thank you, enjoy the rest of the day. aspiring journalist who is in her first semester at Fordham University. So Reem, we wish you the best of luck and we can't wait to read about everything that you write in the future.
Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador Dr. Hassan Zumlot, respected community members, local politicians, friends, and honored guests. On behalf of the board members at the Palestinian American Community Center, as well as the United Holy Land Fund and other co-sponsors, including the Turmus Aya Charity Association, Der Dibwan Charity Organization, and the Muhmas Charity Fund, I welcome you all back to your home away from home. We hope you've all had a wonderful summer break and wish you all a successful academic and professional year ahead. My name is Anam Salim, and it is my pleasure to host you all throughout this evening's exciting lineup of events. Sadly, as Reem just mentioned, today marks the tragic 35th year anniversary of the massacres that took place at Sabra and Shatila. Today and every other day until the brutal colonization of our, of our beloved homeland has ended, is a reminder that the international community continues to fail to hold the culprits accountable for its violations of international law and to defend the basic human rights of the Palestinian people. At this time, I ask you all to please rise for the American National Anthem followed by the Palestinian National Anthem. Prospect Park, Muhammad Khairullah, Clifty, Clifton Councilwoman Lauren Murphy, Clifton Board of Education Commissioner Fahim Abed Rabbun, 
State Senator Republican candidate Dr. Maher Al Saleh, Deputy Mayor, yes. Deputy Mayor of Patterson, Riyadh Ammar. We thank you all for joining us this evening and for always being a reliable friend and a partner to our community. Once again, I welcome you all back. For us at PAC, it's been quite an eventful and groundbreaking summer. This summer, we officially launched and successfully executed our first PAC visit to the homeland under the Homeland Project. During a 10-day guided tour throughout the valleys and villages of Philistine, our selected participants explored the sites and landscapes of our beloved homeland. They visited major cities and remote villages, toured historical and cultural sites and museums, attended lectures at local universities, and met with grassroots organizers, swam in the Dead Sea, and, and tasted local foods. Their trip was highlighted with their visits to the Church of Nativity in the beloved city of Bethlehem, and Masjid al-Aqsa in the Dome of the Rock in the blessed city of Al-Quds al-Sharif. The group was accompanied by PAC's board members, Ammon Nazih Abu Hedba and Zidane Farhat, as well as Homeland Committee member, Ms. Noor Siam, and PAC's Executive Director, Ms. Rania, Mrs. Rania Mustafa. As a committee member on the Homeland Project, I would like to personally extend the gratitude of our entire